This is a clip courtesy of the Final Kid again. This is a compilation of him saying all the people that he says he's known, right? Like celebrities and shit. This is a good one because I think I mentioned it before in the pod that I do want to make my own video of his lies and kind of add my commentary in it, but less so the, the, the celebrities and more so just the the random lies that don't make a sense why he's lying about it, right? It's just because those ones for me are the best ones because in my head, I try to always look look at things from his point of view and i can understand why he does that whole like fake it till you make it thing because he lives in la he's part of the entertainment industry there that whole industry is built on fake it till you make it essentially so i understand why he does that but there's sometimes that he lies you're like bruh like you know no one believes you right nobody like it's not even a necessary lie it doesn't do anything to advance your image or to make you look cooler it's just a lie that just doesn't make any sense why like jeremy does nothing um so yeah so this might be in the same sort of like lane um because no one looks at brendan as like a you know as a fucking top tier celebrity do you know what i mean so the fact that he has all these interactions with these like legit celebrities is fucking insane there you go that's the post and let's put it up on here and yo in mm's on instagram twitter it's social media He's DM me. I, I had a thing with Eminem, right? I walked over and go, what's up, Mr. Stanley? He goes, you're the, you're the uh, tough guy that does comedy, right? And I was like, holy fuck. He knew you. And I was a fighter, and he had tears in his eyes and was telling me to stop fighting. <laughs> Who? Casey Affleck. Wow. <laughs> I'm glad to stop there, sir. There are some of these stories, having only been to LA once, that time I went to LA specifically for the Golf Wang Festival thing, right? Tyler Creators Festival. From that one time that I went out there, I bumped it, not bumped into, but I saw from afar a couple of people I've seen on TV, right? And you talk to people out there and they basically say, that's you know, you see them all the time. So I can imagine there is a possibility if you live in LA, you actually live there and you you hang, you know, you, you live, you, know, you do your life over there, that most likely over the span of your life, you may bump into the odd celebrity here and there but when i say bump into that's a loose descriptive term for like seeing somebody that you know on tv or on youtube across the road speeding by you in a car zipping across on a fucking electric scooter right like that's what i basically think of i don't think of oh you're gonna have a conversation with them they're gonna know who you like what the fuck are you talking about like this is the most insane shit you've ever heard in your life and this would also make more sense these interactions if these were like interactions that he had around the time he was like the most appearance guest on GRE because we have to also you know be fair to Brendan he might not be well known but the appearances on GRE are probably going to make him known to some people so because a lot of celebrities watch Joe Rogan right they are big fans of his um so I could see a a scenario where a Casey Affleck might be a secret or might be an undercover UFC fan, but also loves Joe Rogan and fucking the other guys that hunt and shit and run around and shit. So he might know Ruben and Shawbiz. Cool. But did he have tears in his eyes when he met him? No. Did he maybe say, hey, what's up? Give him a spud, head nod. Maybe that's possible. But that's the thing about Brendan. It's the purposeful embellishing that doesn't like it doesn't make any sense because if you just said hey i was in i was at a ufc fight night one time and casey and i bumped into casey on the way to the fights and i gave him a pound like that's an all right story that's maybe more believable but saying he had tears in his eyes talking to you and telling you not to fight is insane let's go back to it one more time and i was a fighter and he had tears in his eyes and was telling me to stop fighting who Casey Affleck. Wow. He was oh. like, you don't need to do this, man. Yeah. You have so much going for you. You're a smart kid. But I didn't recognize that first. I'm like, that guy looks like Adam. So I was waiting and he <laughs> came up to me. I was at the comedy store two nights before. And I think he was around then. He came up to me and was like, you're that funny guy that kicks ass. Also, the Adam Sandler story is interesting because you get different versions of Adam Sandler from what I've seen online. Right, he's out there playing basketball and you know pick up basketball in random basketball courts. So it's super cool. So he's clearly a guy that doesn't mind, you know, being around the public and regular people. But there's also accounts of Adam Sandler meeting other people, celebrities and stuff, and not being the most friendliest. Right, being a bit frosty. The one story I think of is the Burt Kreischer thing, that video live stream thing he did during lockdown, where he tried to, you know, be funny and have a 
I don't know banter with Adam Sandler. He just didn't under, just didn't get it. Like he wasn't feeling it whatsoever. And personally, I would say, I would say Burt Crash is more famous than Brendan Shaw. Wouldn't you say that? You might not like the comedian, but I think Burt Crash is probably well more well known, <clears throat> or may, maybe one more regarded as seen as a comic than fucking Brendan. So if Adam Sandler didn't know who Burt Kreischer was and didn't really give a fuck about him, or if he did, did, he did know him, he didn't really give a fuck, what makes you think Adam Sandler would have went up to Brendan and said, you're the white guy that kicks ass? <laughs> How does that make sense? Honestly, I don't know. Anyway, let's continue. <clears throat> Leonardo DiCaprio. I go to a SB like Super Bowl. Party. That one is easily, easily e that that one should be easily provable or not. If he was at, at if if he was at that UFC fight night that he's talking about, that one I don't really know because that should be easily provable. There should be easy, you could easily go online and see that day of the car that he was fighting on was The Rock and Leonardo DiCaprio sitting next to each other. That should be easily disprovable. So that one, I'll give him it. I mean, make, that might be true. Who knows? Party with Tim Tebow. We walk in, and then Michael Irvin's there, like surrounded by a ton of people. You know, he's the life of the party. Like, and he sees me and goes, "Shab, Shab, get off here, baby." I'm like, "Oh, what's up, baby?" You know, and there's all these people. I go to grab his hand, and he grabs my head, holds me down, and kisses the top of my head in front of everybody. How do you know him, Dick? Uh, we did the 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 tournament together, the oh, charity okay. tournament together. But I still fuck you. What? In what universe do you think Michael Irvin knows who Brendan Shaw is? Oh my god, that's the most made again. I I watch clips online of like those fucking ESPN shows where all the football guys are shouting at each other right about stats and shit. And just from his demeanor, how he carries himself, how well regarded he is, Hall of Famer, blah blah. I just can't picture in my mind any scenario where Michael Irvin and Brendan Shaw would be friends or would know each other. Like, how would he know who he is? In what capacity? Football. He didn't play. Like, what? UFC? The, the, does Michael Irvin watch UFC? I don't think so. Rogan. I don't think Michael Irvin watches Rogan. <laughs> like, <laughs> he's probably watching videos of Charleston White. <laughs> he's not tuning in to see Rogan and Brendan Shaw pontificate about fucking apes <laughs> and cold plungers. Yo. Okay, that, that, that one caught me off guard. Michael Irvin. All right, cool, man, I guess. Because Travis Barker's my boy. And Travis, is one of the yeah, best Travis, the, uh, did the... Travis is literally one of the best people on earth. And he fucks with him. So I... The funny thing about this exchange, sorry to keep stopping, is the funny thing about this exchange, Chappelle is such a good guy. This is what good people do. Normal human beings do this, right? Normal human beings. Bean cheese, bean cheese, bean cheese. Every time dinner would come, I'm like, oh, does she really think beans go with every goddamn meal? Is she serious? <laughs> she for real? Dude, everything they eat, bean cheese, bean Ooh. cheese, bean cheese, bean cheese. I'm like, the hell, man? We're just going to carb load year round? All right, beans. I'm, I'm doing a Brendan. Normal human beings. If, you're, if you have a story about somebody famous and you're sharing it, they don't try and one-up you. Even if they know the person personally, even if they know them, you know, they've maybe met them more times than you have. They just let you say it. They let you say your story and then maybe they'll mention their story after you finished. They don't try and like, oh, yeah, you don't, or maybe sometimes they don't even mention it because I know I don't. Sometimes somebody, I let them have the moment. But the funny thing in this interaction, Chappelle actually knows Travis Barker better than Brendan because they're running the same sort of like, you know, musical circles and shit, blah, de, blah, blah, blah. And the band is into some of the guys are mutual friends. And Travis Barker follows Chappelle on Instagram, which is a big deal in that kind of scene because, you know, these are big celebrities, musicians. A follow kind of means a lot. It's like basically an endorsement of friendship, an acknowledgement that I know you and I like you. So the fact that Travis Barker has actually had communication with Chappelle, has actually been on stage with Chappelle, knows the guys that he knows to the point where he follows him on Instagram, but Brendan doesn't and is sharing this made up story about passing him in a car and he was tailgating him is hilarious. But then he tries to like shit on Chappelle, make him feel like nothing. 
but then actually Travis Barker actually knows him and not him. That's the thing that I find funny. I gotta imagine yeah. is a good person. Thanks for that follow, Travis. <laughs> He's great. Rick Ross texts me because the I was talking about. Uh, yeah, how crazy is that? I can't believe that just that's 2023 for you. Rick Ross DM me. Sorry, I didn't text. DM me and has this. And uh, so I'm about fish tanks. I'm ballsy with fish tanks. And uh, we posted about it. He must have saw it because he DM me. I told you when I was working the Logan Paul Floyd Mayweather fight, I went to the restaurant and his whole team, all, all of them, all of them were coming out. And he goes, I know you, you're the white boy who works too much. That's me, dude. Oh, is that right? Yeah, that's me, dude. Wow. He's like, you're all over, man. I'm like, yeah, I'm exhausted. No. Why doesn't he? Why doesn't he ever have bad interactions? That's the one thing that's a telling sign of this. Because again, I'm not really a fan of this whole like of that whole thing anyway. Of like celebrity telling, it's just weird, isn't it? Even if you do meet them in real life, I think if you want to be, if you're part of the industry and you're also, you know, like Brendan is, you're a part of the industry, you're a person. It's just odd to always be sharing every interaction you've had because maybe sometimes you might meet them somewhere and you're the only person that's well known that's seen them. They don't want you sometimes just keeping stum about certain things is like i don't know it's a better way to kind of like you know maybe cultivate a relationship or something do you know what i mean it's a bit corny a little bit sucky arsey and stuff but i'd imagine in that world sometimes keeping stum about who you met in public like, and not mentioning it in public can actually go a long way to kind of help your foster relationship to people because they know okay cool this one's one of the normal guys who can be trusted whatever and you might be welcome to the crew i don't know just that thing is weird but if you want to be that guy i also find it very interesting how he never seems to have a bad interaction and we do us regular people civilians as, as they like to call us we might meet somebody who's generally chill and nice on a bad day and have a bad interaction with them it happens all the time it's just you know we're humans so they've had a bad day but i find it interesting how he never seems to have a bad interaction with a celebrity it's always a they are fawning over him that's the always the the the, the red flag in these stories it's always like no matter who the celebrity is from casey affleck or like a fucking legit hollywood fucking actor right to like the biggest stars in music they always seem to go to him <laughs> it's never like he was i don't know he was in the, somewhere and he was like he saw fucking i don't know uh, Jennifer Aniston and was trying to run after her to get an autograph. No, it's always Jennifer Aniston was in fucking Irwan and she saw him and said, hey, you're that guy on Rogan, right? Like, bruh, bruh, really? <laughs> anyway. The Rock. 6'2". <laughs> six yeah, no, he's 6'2". Six six I'm in the elevator. It was just, the, no, it was just two of us out of a, a Did you say anything? Fight. Just what's up? Just what's up, The Rock? He said what? He said he's a fan. I said, I want to fucking fight you. He's not. I, all of that sounds made up. Yeah. Our phones. It was an Oscar party, and everyone's oh, in tuxedos. Yeah, yeah. So it, no, there's mm -hmm. no cell phones. Mm -hmm. I've been to those parties. And Will Smith asked me to. Uh... <laughs> How convenient! The one party you meet says Will Smith at. There's no cell phones. How convenient! <laughs> Will Smith asked me if I did private training. <laughs> he did. Who? Mm -hmm. Will Smith was like, "Hey man, you're the reason why you punched Buddy in the face." Okay. <laughs> oh, the reason that he training. slapped old boy. Oh, I didn't train. You're the reason why Chris Rock. No, I didn't train with him. You I did didn't, it, right? didn't take him up on it. I got different vibes. What did you man. say to him? No. I'm going to hold mitts for you? You, you didn't say no. To I promised you. I was a guy. Well, at the time, as a current UFC fighter, I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't like hold mitts, dog. Do you know, have you, have you met Kanye? I don't hold mitts like he's above it. Like, <laughs> the attitude that this guy has, man. Imagine the, the attitude that he has. Like, he's above holding mitts for Will Smith. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But, as a dude, we all have like our dude act, our male actor heroes, right? Or guys that we kind of love and obsess. I don't know. Some I don't know where. I think fighters probably have the same thing. They must have certain. Maybe you might not be a guy that wants to train people. Maybe because you don't know how to do it. But there are certain guys that you just maybe look at and think, you know what? I kind of always wanted to be you. You're an amazing inspiration. I think you've done whatever something. You'd you'd think. You'd maybe want to just, just for the clout of it, forget impress, just for the fucking story of it, you maybe want to take him up on his offer. Will Smith, right? Just for the story of being able to tell your friends, God, guess what? I, I fucking held mitts for fucking Will Smith. You got pictures of him in the fucking, you know, in the gym with you, uh, you know, market, you know, whatever, like in, in rash cards and shit. That'd be pretty cool as a story just to tell and to share with your friends, but not Brendan. <laughs> He's above holding mitts for Will Smith. <laughs> He's above it. Will Smith who? <laughs>
<laughs> oh, I fucking love this guy. <clears throat> yes. What about him, dude? Have you talked to him? Spent time with him? He knows who you are. I doubt it. Probably just a white boy with a face. That's it. You you get the gist of it, isn't it? Like absolutely insane amount of people. Like the list so far: Eminem. I think that's Adam Sandler, right? That was Adam Sandler again. Leonardo DiCaprio, right? <laughs> You see these stories. I think this this was uh, Michael Irvin, uh, and then we got I think The Rock, Rick Ross, right? <laughs> um, Floyd Mayweather and Logan Paul's team, The Rock, and then at the end, Will Smith, Kanye West, and Kim Kardashian, like or the Kardashians or something. It's just like, bro, bro, and also think about it this way: Brendan's very like image conscious. He cares about how he looks, how he's perceived online. And, you know, for the point where, like, allegedly he buys views and shit. Like, he cares about all that stuff, right? Followers, all that stuff. Would you think Brendan's the kind of guy who would meet all those people and not take a picture? Think about that. Do you think Brendan's the type of guy who would meet all these people and not take a fucking selfie? Really? Come on. Do you know I mean? Like, the way he's always fucking giggly and happy to run around and take selfies with, like, legit comedians that maybe try to, it may be in the hopes that those pictures will maybe solidify him and make him look like a legit comedian more so. Do you think you honestly pass a chance to not take a picture with Casey Affleck and Leonardo DiCaprio and Will Smith and Rick Ross and Kanye <laughs> and Michael Irvin? Do you honestly think you'd pass that opportunity? Like, come on, man. Come on come on come on and again i'm one of those people like i'm too naive i'm too fucking benefit of the doubty whatever that fucking term is i honestly think there's some truth to a lot of these stories i just think he embellishes them too much was he at a party somewhere in hollywood during the heydays of his ufc or maybe some few years ago at some fucking hollywood mixer where people are serving cocktails and you know chin wagon and shit and he may have saw mike lovin across the room possibly was there an occasion, maybe at one UFC fight card early in his career, he might have saw, you know, Casey Affleck standing around in the stadium as he was getting going to his seat? Possibly. Would I believe that he might have spoken to Will Smith's trainer and Will Smith's trainer said to him, hey, would you mind training Will Smith and being part of his training team? Maybe. But he said Will Smith asked him, can he hold mitts? So all these stories probably have an inkling of truth, but he just adds more to it because he just is a like he's just a pathological liar. Like that's basically it. The guy's a pathological liar. That's it. <laughs> he's just a pathological liar. He can't help it. <laughs> like there's truth to his stories, yet he still lies because he just loves to lie. I guess that's it. <laughs> mine didn't get flagged. I say some dicey stuff. I didn't monetize mine. And yeah. one of the reasons I didn't go with Comedy Central is because I said so, um, I was yeah, making yeah, fun yeah. of news yeah. and COVID, and they're like, "No, I understand." So upload it to YouTube and not monetize it. That so you didn't monetize. Hey, photographers, you blockbuster. <laughs> It's just like, I can't get it. Like, oh my God. <laughs> oh. Anyway, uh, what's the, um, Uche is, uh, he's so bad at lying. I was so bad for him. You know, it's the thing about him. I don't even think he thinks he's bad at, oh, I'm going to throw something out there. I don't think he thinks he's bad at lying. I think he thinks he's good at it because he's adding, he's exaggerating real stories. Like he's doing what Bert does when Bert exaggerates a real story. So to make it funnier, to make it more interesting. That's what he's when he's interaction. So I think he, I think he doesn't think he's lying. It's like um, I'm trying to think of what people because I don't, I don't lie like this. Like it's just not worth. It. I just don't give a fuck. So I'm, it's just whatever. So I'm trying to think of a thing that people do when they lie. Um, so I think the telltale sign if you're lying is if like you like, you like you start to like scream. You start to get really animated and really sensitive, right, and emotional. But some people sometimes do a thing where like they try and appear really like not bothered. But then obviously they are bothered. You know what I mean? Like they're trying to, they, they try and basically convince you that they're not lying by trying to act as like chill as possible. But they exude anxiety and nervousness and shit. I think that's what he does with the exaggerations. I think he feels like if a story has a thread of truth and he just adds a bit to it, 
it's not going to be obvious. But but what he doesn't understand is that the whole fucking story just sounds insane because we don't believe we don't believe we don't believe as regular civilians we don't believe that brendan is of the level of celebrity where all these people would know who he is number one <laughs> right and also would be would go out of their way to always acknowledge him first that's the thing that we don't understand because even in your local neighborhood right in your local community in your local scene there are people who are like a little bit more well known than you are who if you message them on instagram and you ask them a question or something they'll leave you on scene sometimes they won't even open your dm right but brendan is wanting us to believe that some of the most famous people within their fields super busy super rich whatever they're doing busy whatever it is would make the time out of their day to reply to him first to acknowledge him in public first to cry in front of him like <laughs> come on brendan man come on brother. you lie so bad so bad but i think in his head he thinks he's lying good because he's just it's a truth but i'm adding a little lie to it you know oh but yeah